Good morning. This is JHS Weekly. I'm Sydney Arfin. And I'm Brayden Dick. It's likely you have a cell phone on you right now, but do you know when it's appropriate to get it out during school? JHD's Alex Carson talks to students and teachers to find out the answer. After a long summer of scrolling, students are back and they brought their phones. But when can they use them in class? Brendan Cooney is an English teacher and is wanting stricter rules on cell phones in class. Uh, here at JHS, uh, this year, teachers are uh, telling students that uh, what we have is a threshold ban. So students may not use their uh, smartphone or their uh, smartwatches or earbuds once they cross the threshold of the classroom. Mr. Cooney, as well as many other teachers, feel that cell phones have hurt students' academic and social life. Especially since the pandemic, that the level of addiction to these devices has been uh, greater. I see students sit next to each other and they look at their phones and they don't talk. Although many teachers are for putting away the phones, some students not so much. Junior Anna Barnhart feels it's been quite inconvenient. I think all my friends have basically just been kind of irritated by it and just annoyed that when they're finished with their work, they can't get on their phones as much as they would like. Without unlimited access to their phones, safety is also a concern for students. I 100% think there are safety concerns because getting in contact with parents is something really important that I think we should be allowed to do or else this, like, I wouldn't feel as protected in this environment. Putting away the phone is a rude awakening for some. But Cooney has seen firsthand how beneficial unplugging can be. I asked students last year uh, to participate in a, in a no phone day experiment and several students uh, commented on how much more social their school experience was on that day. Both Cooney and Barnhart agree phones can be a distraction, but finding the middle ground is the challenge. Reporting for JetHD, this is Alex Carson. Attention artists, are you needing more time to work on artwork either for class or for fun? Do you want to learn about drawing, painting, sculpture, or photography? You should check out Open Art Studio, which is held after school every Tuesday in room B201, every Wednesday in room B215, and every Thursday in room B218. You don't have to be currently enrolled in an art class to attend. World Language Club has begun meeting the first and third Tuesday of each month. Their next meeting will be held on Tuesday, September 20th at 3.45 p.m. in room B13. There will be a prize contest. The JHS Philanthropic Society made a check presentation of 10000 to the Foster Adoptions Connection of Joplin. The group has several fundraisers last school year of this nonprofit organization. The JHS group will add several new members to the group this year and continue to fundraise for a new organization. An important part of the high school experience is taking part in extracurriculars. Many have no idea what is actually available to them. PhD's Andrew Myers explains how Clubfest helped students find their passions. A few hundred students packed the Kaminsky Gym all looking for students who share a common interest. They attended Clubfest and William Keskamethi, a teacher here at Joplin High School, hosts the Jam Club where they rock out after school. He explains how important it really is. Uh, Joplin High School probably has the widest uh, array of after school activities of anywhere in the four states and we really like students to take advantage of it. It's been uh, instrumental in getting a lot of students familiar with Jam Club. Uh, you know, a lot of students are really busy. There's so much stuff going on. Elijah Neville, a senior at JHS and part of the Philanthropic Society, explained what Club Fest means to him. So I feel like a lot of time people have hard times finding a club where they might, you know, be comfortable or enjoy themselves or do something like giving back to the community. Uh, and this gives them an opportunity to not just see the clubs that are here at the high school and maybe get an idea of what they might be, but also to talk to people that are in the clubs and maybe if you have friends in the club or if the people in there, you know, really sell it and make it sound exciting, that makes it a lot easier for students to get involved. As well, Dayton Watkins, who is also a senior at JHS and a member of the JROTC, believes the fest does wonders in getting people involved. It allows us to recruit a bunch of people, just randomly. Uh, there's all these kids coming by, it's easy to recruit everybody. Uh, our program actually has been like lowering an amount of people that we got, but Club Fest recently, I've even recruited like four people already, which is helping our program a lot, substantially. Whatever your interest, there's probably a club for you. If not, you could create it next year. 
Reporting for JetHD, this is Andrew Myers. Attention all seniors, Senior Sunrise will be September 13th from 6.45 to 8 on the soccer field. There will be breakfast, refreshments, music, and fun. Wear your PJs and join us to watch the sunrise. Please contact Ms. Bagby or Ms. Trevino if you have any questions. If you don't want to go to college and you want skills to pay the bills, there is an option at Joplin High School. JHD's at, at that's not Andrew, that's Gavin Hollingshead shows us how. Senior Miles Griffith is normally a College Heights Cougar, but for three hours during the day, he is a Joplin Eagle. He is one of the many sending school students who visit Franklin Technology Center to take their classes. It's also just nice to have that change of environment because sometimes you get a little bit dulled down by the fact that you're sitting in the same building for hours on end. Miles is enrolled in film and broadcasting at FTC. Um, I actually en enjoy both of the teachers that I have this year, Mr. Douglas and Mr. Smith down here in the uh, film slash TV production studios. They're really cool guys. Steve Reed is the assistant director of FTC, and he says several hundred sending school students visit every year. Most schools can't afford the programs we have here at Franklin Tech. All this equipment and tools and stuff that we have to purchase. Not every school can do that. The schools that send students to FTC are College Heights, Macaulay, Webb City, Carl Junction, and Sarcoxy. I mean, this is, if you want to learn a skill that's going to get you paid the rest of your life, this is where you need to be. Miles doesn't plan on going to college. He wants to go straight into the film industry after he finishes taking his FTC classes. I like being able to come here during my high school years and try to get more of an actual, like, fundamental education in a field of work that I'd like to go into. So instead of after high school going to some college that's going to teach me a bunch of stuff that I don't really need to know, and then a little bit of what I do need to know, I get to come here to a trade school in high school and learn a lot more about what I actually want to do in a shorter amount of time. If you are interested in any of the FTC classes, you can sign up and become an Eagle. Reporting for Jet HD, this is Gavin Hollingshead. This has been JHS Weekly. Have a wonderful week.